Hey everybody, welcome back. Let us continue with the so-called rear recoil spring guide. And for that I am going to just create a box here. First of all, drag it out there, make sure it's centered. I'm having the pivot in the center of the box and put it to zero on the X coordinates. And now I'm just scaling it here on the X axis. Give it the proper width and adjust it a bit more here on the height and already get that angle in there. Now I'm going to use our connection tool and I want to give it eight of these edges go into these faces, align it horizontally and vertically to get these steps in there. I'm actually going to leave the one at the bottom with that bit of an angle as I see it on the reference images. And now it's just a matter of doing a chamfer there at the bottom, the two edges and just connecting some of these vertexes together. And let me copy over here Turbo Smooth and Chamfer from one of these objects and then just paste it onto that object. Modify our amount a bit, make it a little wider. And also I want to have the tension put to 0 0.5. And that looks already pretty okay. Just got to make sure that we don't have that pinch there. So I will just connect some more vertexes here. And now it looks good. Just going to give it a bit more here of that angle with our FDD modifier. Collapse the FDD. Leave the chamfer and turbo smooth on top. So make sure you make collapse two and not collapse all. Let me copy that face there from the back of that object that we just created. Shift and dragging it out will make a copy of it. And now I will take that face, flip the geometry on it. Let me detach it as well. And just drag some geometry out of it. So that gives us exactly the same dimensions, just a little wider than that actual object. And now we are going to use for the first time our Boolean operation. Compound objects, Pro Boolean actually, advanced options and make sure you have remove only invisible checked, which results in the cleanest Boolean operation. Now I'm going to just pick it and subtract it here from our actual receiver. Zoom in there and just reconnect some of these vertexes. And also the Boolean operation always adds some extra vertexes around the area where we perform that Boolean, like this one here. And that is just one thing to be aware of when doing that Booleaning, that there's always some cleanup work around the target area left to do. So let's just connect some of these vertexes here. Make sure the edge flow is good and get rid of some of these extra verts that we see. First of all, more connecting. And here's one of these verts that were created by the Boolean that we just want to delete. And more target welding here. Another one of these verts. And let me grab these edges here on the corners and give it a chamfer. Let me just 
press control and backspace here on these extra edges that we don't want and target weld here on that case And since that is still not as round as I want it to be, I'm going to select each of these two edges here on the corners and then perform one of our flow connect actions here to make it rounder. So now it's pretty much done. I'm just going to give it an auto smooth here, ring selection, face conversion and auto smooth and let me just reconnect some of these edges here in the inside of the receiver that I forgot to add earlier and next it would be time to work on our bolt carrier this element here and what I'm going to do is take the geometry that we have here in the back of our upper receiver, take these faces all the way to up here, press shift and drag them out so that we make a copy of it. Now I just want to flip it here on the x-axis and then selecting them all in face mode and flip that geometry around so that it points in the right direction drag it out here so that it's almost aligned to the inside of our upper receiver and I'm just going to align all these vertexes here vertically delete some of these extra verts that we actually don't want same as here and that way we already created that shape accurate matching to the insides there of the upper part Let me drag it all the way out here so that it really aligns properly. And let's just continue to give it the proper shape as seen on that reference image. Bring it a little bit more out there. I'm gonna take these vertexes here. And now I will add an edge connection there. Take these two faces and drag them out here with our extrude. Put the extrude to zero and then just push it out and align it so that it's all straight there. Let me go over here to left orthographic view and make sure that everything is matching. And with these two edges here, I'm going to replicate that little bevel there that we see on the reference. Going to target weld these. And let's give everything a smooth here, auto smooth, and this element also an extra auto smooth. And same for these. This whole object I want to have separated by smoothing groups. And thinking about it, I'm actually going to give that here a chamfer, make it rounder. Just reconnect these vertexes. And then just another auto smooth here. Make sure that curve is all nice. And let me just isolate that piece together with our reference image so that we see more what's going on and bring that part here into the right position. Let's see if it actually lines up here with the upper part of the receiver when we would push it back, which is exactly what the bolt carrier would do. And then let me just work here on the rest of the shape drag out some geometry here
delete these faces here at the bottom and on the side. And let me select these vertexes and bring it down a bit. Front perspective and also align it here with the receiver. And now I'll just push it back to where it belongs. And let's switch out of the isolation mode here and go back in the front perspective. On a second thought, I'm going to delete these faces that I pulled out there. Let me also delete that vertex here, really don't need that. And now I'm going to push that edge out here to zero on the x-axis. Just give it a little bit of a bevel here. Make it nice and curved and that one here I want to make sure it's perfectly aligned on X. And now we can use our symmetry modifier, which is the better way of handling that object here. I'm going to collapse that and get rid here of these faces, which we wouldn't have on the bolt carrier. Gonna snap these verts here to the front and weld it. And I don't know where that vertex came from, I'm just gonna get rid of it. And do some bridging here and some capping. Also connect it here and now I'm going to select that face and extrude it out. As seen on the reference image. And in order to make that more curved here, I'm going to chamfer these edges properly. It doesn't have to be perfectly round because we'll probably never really see it. But as long as it looks cylindrical, that's perfectly fine. Going to select these vertexes here and straighten them. Align them vertically and gonna weld together what belongs together and just make some connections here and some general cleanup. Get rid of the edges that we don't want and vertexes. Don't need that, I'm gonna target weld that and same over here. Me push that back in there a bit. And as a next thing, I want to be working on that little handle that sticks out of the bolt carrier. And for that, I'm going to isolate that here again, together with our ref image. Take these two edges and give it an edge connection and put it into place. Now together with our chamfer here and another edge connection, we can then just first of all connect these vertexes here, get rid of these two edges and then just extrude out here that face. And that's our basis already to start working on that handle. Extrude it out a bit more, which gives us automatically an extra edge loop there. And we need some more edge loops, so I'm just going to chamfer it. And start working on that shape here. Let's narrow this here. And also it makes a bit of that curve there, so I'm already putting that into place here. Let's add a few more edge loops and then let's continue with some FDD modification on it. FDD free seems to be fine for that. Let's take these control points and give it a bit of a push.
FDD modifiers are definitely some of the best that help us with cases like that here, wherever we want to move a lot of vertexes into a certain direction with a curve. And just some more chamfering here to make that round. And that here is another case for some chamfering. Let's be generous, give it a double chamfer here. And curve that a bit more here. And that looks already pretty okay to me. Let's just make sure it actually has the proper size. So it looked a little too small for me. I'm gonna adjust it a bit more here. And also I wanna give it a bit more of a length here, which would be another case for FDD modifier. Just take these control points here at the end of it and push it out a bit. And maybe it has too much of a height to it. So let's just take it again here with the top vertexes and drag it down a bit. Bit of a scale here on the z-axis can also help. And let's just continue with the next piece, which would be this element there that kind of clamps the rear side into it. And for that, a box is the perfect base to start with. Should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to put some more edge connections here onto that box. Make sure it's horizontally and vertically aligned. And another one here. And then we can just get rid of these faces. And let's put back face color on so that we see the emptiness really on the other side and don't get confused. Going to drag some more geometry out here and snap it to these vertexes. Make sure it's welded. And here with the border mode and capping, we can already close that. And let's get rid of the edges that we don't really need. Control backspace and same over here. Same as this one and this edge loop here we also don't want. And now it's time to make that round there as we see on the reference image. And for that we are going to chamfer it again. And let's be generous, give it eight sides. Match it to our reference image here and now just connect some vertexes so that we don't have that overlap geometry happening there. push it over here and another look at the reference image reveals that these top corners there are also rounded so I'm going to give it a chamfer weld it together and that was the wrong shortcut I'm just going to align it horizontally and give it some more chamfering here. And some more edge connections here or vertex connections.
and just some more chamfering here. Let's use the flow connect on that one. And what I want to do next is take that element that we have here, go over to hierarchy, effect pivot only, and put the pivot to zero on the x-axis so that now we can use our mirror tool here on X and have the same piece already here on the other side. However, it's a little different. It continues a bit under that upper receiver and for that I'm just going to add some edge loop here, align it on our horizontal axis Take that face and just extrude it out here. Don't need to get out that far. And let's just position it correctly here. And same as on the other side, I'm going to use our chamfer here for it. Make sure it fits that curve that we already created there on the upper receiver. And now we get these overlap geometry again because we haven't connected these vertexes. So let's just take care of that. And it looks like we have a double vert here, so I'm going to weld that. Just doing some more connections here. And now the only thing that I see missing is that little element here, that bolt hat. So I'm just going to copy it there from our trigger guard, scale it up a bit, and just copy it over to the other side, give it a 180 degree rotation. And we are pretty much done with it. Little bit here to the back. And then as a next thing, I want to be doing some work here on our actual receiver part. Let's connect some vertexes so that we have that thing ready here for our symmetry modifier. And I also want to be chamfering these edges here. Gonna give it the ring selection and the flow connect on the top part. And now I want to cut that hole in there that we see above the receiver. So I'm going to take just that face, scale it down, align it properly here. Take it again and just scale it here on the x-axis and on the y-axis. And I have that weird scale mode, so let me just switch that back. Put it into place. Convert over to a vertex selection once we have that. And then we're going to give it a chamfer here. Let me just deselect these vertexes here. And now I'm going to give it another chamfer. And now we have a bit of an interesting looking spider web here and we just have to clean that up a bit. Collapse these edges and target weld these vertexes here over to the next stop, you could say. 
some more target welding. And now we can take that face and use our inset. And then just with the move tool, push it in here on the X axis and just do it again here. Going to take these edges, give it an edge loop, scale it up a bit. So now we have three segments there. Just gonna collapse some edges there on the inside. Let's use our symmetry modifier. And let's take these bold hats that we created earlier here, copy them into place and make sure we don't have a rotation on it because earlier we gave it a rotation of two degree. For that we want it to be straight and just rotate it 90 degrees so that it actually can stick here to our receiver. And maybe we want to scale it up a bit. Make sure it's perfectly aligned. And then we just have to copy it a few times. This is by the way not a floater, this is actual geometry that we're going to be using later. Some of these other elements that we see on the receiver we may want to use as floaters, but some of these bolt heads that stick out we definitely want to have as geometry to get more depth in there. And these ones here, let's see which one of them we want to be using as floaters. I see some that appear to be sticking out a bit, so I'm going to take care of them first. Copy that element here that we already created earlier. Switch over again here, isolation mode with our receiver and that element. And then I'll just continue by copying these small screws here into place. But first let's already apply the chamfer modifier on it. Give it a bit of a crease here. And let's take that bolt head and start here above the trigger. This is where I see the first one. Gonna copy it over here. And we have another one over here and one just below that. Copy it and you can see we have that element in the background of that. So I'm going to disable the chamfer here. Make sure we don't have a rotation on Y and just give it a copy. Scale it down a bit. Collapse the chamfer modifier. We don't need it for that action. Connect these vertexes and I'm going to delete these faces and also I don't want to have these edges there in the back. Really just the front face is what I want. And now I'm just going to drag that all the way down to the bottom part of the receiver. Some fresh geometry here with shift. Make sure it's properly in place here. And then we can take these faces and give it an inset as well and just push it in a bit. So that makes for a nice floater object here. Just gotta assign some auto smooth to it. And I'm going to put an edge loop here, edge connection. Put it all the way to the bottom, drag it up a bit. And then still being in edge mode, I'm going to take that edge and drag it out a bit so that it looks more tapered there. Alternatively, we could have also just chamfered it now that I think about it, but either way we can do it. And as a next thing, I'm going to make a copy of one of our bolt heads here. And if you look at the reference image, there are these other bolt heads that actually have been pressed into the receiver. So I'm going to modify these edges here, drag them out, which then results in that appearance as if that has been stamped in there. 
with some whatever tool they would be using for it. Let's see how it looks with our Turbo Smooth on top. And that reveals that I just want to give it a bit of a scale, give it a bit of an extra curve. And other than that, just a matter of scaling it and then just copying it over to wherever we see it on the reference image. There's another one over here. And one over there as well. And next, I'm going to take that piece here, go over to left orthographic view, and copy it over here to these elements. Get rid of the Y rotation so that we can take these vertexes and just drag it out here. Scale it down a bit and now go over to our face selection. Once we adjusted that here a bit more. And then we're going to just drag it out even more. scale it a bit and now we have this element here that we may want to support with some support loops here. Now it's nice and straight and it's just a matter of copying it down once. Give it a little scale and copy and now we're pretty much done here with that side. Unfortunately, we also have these elements on the other side. And as for these bold hats, we can just attach them to the receiver because they are identical on the other side. However, these bits here look a bit different. So I'm just going to select them. At least one of each of these pieces and then rotate it 180 degree. Make sure it's properly aligned here to the other side of the receiver. And once we have that, we will then just jump over to the right orthographic view and position them to wherever they belong. These ones look like they're pretty big, so I just gave it a bit of a scale. And these ones are the ones that go in again. First, let's finish the ones that actually stick out. So I'm going to give this one another copy here. And these are the ones that go in. Just copy it over to where we see it on the reference image. And then we have this unique element over here. What I want to do is scale it up a bit. And then we're just going to use our inset here. Another inset and just drag it out here. Grow the selection, give it an auto smooth, and that's going to make for a nice floater. You can see which ones of our objects here are floaters because we have a bit of this overlap on them. The pieces that are actual bolt hats that stick out are not floaters. Everything else like that here has a bit of that overlap which results in the normal map to be a little smoother around the edges. And I'm just modifying that one element that we already had on the other side. Just going to modify it a bit, make it a little longer overall. And now I'm going to rotate it 45 degree and drag it behind that large bolt head here. Give it a bit of a scale here on the X axis and just drag it behind that bolt. And now just take it again Press shift and rotate makes a copy of it 
90 degree and we already have that element done here. We also have the same element appearing here, but in that case we want to pretty much cut it in half here because it only shows on the top part. Gonna delete one half, drag it here into the center and then just rotate it over with shift pressed so that we also have it appearing there on that other side. And let me just double check that nothing is missing. And it looks like there are two more of these floaters that we want to copy over here, top of that gap. Copy and another copy. And now it's done here with that receiver for our high poly pieces. As a next thing, I want to start working on our rear side. And I will start with a box, give it a width of 1.85 centimeters, put it to zero. 1.85 centimeters is what I read on Wikipedia as the width of the rear side. So just want to make sure we are having the right dimensions here. Put that box into place. And this is probably going to take a while that rear side. So let's just start with a few edge connections here. And then later we're going to clean that up. First of all, let's get everything here in position already. We have that bit of a curve element there on the left upper side. Let me add another edge connection here so that we also take care of that curve. And some more working here on that curve. And now I'm going to delete those faces that we don't want to have there. Please be aware that I also look at my reference images on the right side of the monitor, which is always crucial to getting our elements right. Not everything is perfectly visible on these reference images that we're looking at here in the viewport. So it's essential to have a lot of reference images ready. Either way, let me just already add that element here so that we get a better feeling here for our dimensions. when that piece here is in place. Gonna get rid of these height segments. And as the next thing, I'm just gonna continue here, make that curved. Work without chamfer. And again, let's be generous, let's make it nice and round. And now I'm going to take these edges here all the way up to here and with X and shift I'm going to drag them all the way over here to zero on the X axis, weld it together there and prepare the next step here. Drag some more geometry out and snap it into place here as well as weld it and let me already prepare these vertexes here so that we can drag some more geometry where we need it Be 
these vertexes here we can push down and give it a bit of a chamfer there and definitely we want to have some chamfer here as well so I'll give it a double chamfer for now and now I'm going to drag some more geometry out here get rid of that edge and that vertex and now I will just take these corner vertexes and give them a chamfer until they appear all around here kind of weld that vertex which was a double vert and now I'm going to chamfer it more to give it this nice roundness there and that way we can very quickly create that cylindrical shape here already going to put that vertex here out of the way because we need to cut a hole in there at some point let me just make sure I weld everything here with a minimal threshold so we don't have any open spots and now I'm going to just drag everything out a bit more here some fresh geometry and have a look with our symmetry modifier let's isolate it together with our receiver because as I was surprised to see the receiver is actually tucked under the rear side and while I'm at it I'm just gonna grab these vertexes here and position it a bit more push it down a bit and that requires us to push it a bit back to the left here on that part and also I want to double click that edge which makes an edge loop out of it or an edge selection and just give it a chamfer here to make it round and as for that I'm going to make a ring selection and give it a flow connect so now we really have a nice round upper receiver and let me jump into the top perspective here take these vertexes and scale them out a bit make it a bit wider let's just double check here on the right orthographic view that these edges are let's switch over to the slice plane and let me add some support edges here where the receiver would later tuck under the rear side for that I need some support loops here and the best way to do that in that case is with a slice plane so now I'll zoom in here take our cut tool and just follow that shape of the upper receiver all the way here to the middle and then as usual we don't have to do the work twice and we will then just later use the symmetry modifier for it for now let me just grab these faces here already and just delete them get rid of the right side and now I'll go over to the edge mode collapse this edge here and just take these ones and drag them in with shift so that we have some fresh geometry that we now snap here to that vertex and on the inside I also want to be dragging some fresh geometry out and just snap it here to the bottom gonna weld it here and just get rid of these faces there that kind of overlap also get rid of these edges clean up the geometry a bit also get rid of that edge or edge loop and let's continue with some smoothing groups I'm gonna select the whole object and give it an auto smooth and now I will just take 
these three faces give it an outer smooth, one smoothing group, and this one, this one, and also that one over here. Back into our left orthographic view, I will then continue with the cylinder, 18 sides, give it a gray material and make sure that we are only working here with the front face. And I'm going to drag out some more geometry here on the top so that we can replicate this shape here. Let's give it a chamfer here as well. Drag out some more geometry because what I want to do with it is first of all put it into position and then we're going to use our pro boolean operation on it again so that we can cut that hole in there. Let's switch over here, have the rear side selected and go over to pro boolean advanced options and remove only invisible and then subtraction mode and then we're just gonna pick that object which cuts that perfect shape in there and now it's just a matter of connecting these vertexes here properly and looking at that shape I want to select these two edges make an edge connection and then just drag that edge a little bit down so we have a, more of a curve going on there. Back to our symmetry modifier. Starts looking pretty good but now we have to take some of these faces away here on the right side and for that I just gonna add that extra edge loop, make a selection for these faces that we want to delete and just commit to that, get rid of them. And here on that side, I will then make a selection for all these faces and copy them over to the other side, flip them over. And I want to copy that coordinate on the X axis for that vertex, have these edges selected and paste that coordinate on it so that it's perfectly aligned. And now I'm just going to snap that geometry back on there. Take these edges at the bottom all the way to here and then align them horizontally. Bring them down and get rid of some of these vertexes here. Target weld. I want to leave a few of them because we might just need them in a bit. I'm going to drag out some more geometry here, put it to zero and bridge these two edges. Let's drag that one up here as seen on the reference image. I'm just gonna get rid of that face and bridge it back together with that other edge and give it a threshold everything 0.01 to make sure that everything is properly welded. Cap that hole there And some more cleanup work here. Let's just take these edges and delete them. Control backspace. And let me just select that thing here again, only the vertexes and skate it on the Y and on the X axis. It appeared a little bit too wide there. So let's just make sure it has the right dimensions. Some more vertex to vertex connections here with edges and also one over here. Let me cut an edge down there and another one here because we have a bit of a bevel there in the inside. 
So once we have that in place, I will just select these faces and drag them on the x-axis a little bit on the outside here or on the inside. Next, let's work on that piece there at the front of the rear side. And for that, we can just work with that face geometry that we have here. Our edges are actually better suited for it. So I'm just gonna have a edge connection here. Drag them to the right side and now I'll take these faces and just delete them. Connect these verts. Select these edges, drag them out with shift and collapse them so that they meet at one vertex there. And then we can take these edges here, drag them also out and target weld that vertex together there. And that leaves us already with that shape that we want to have. Just gonna give it a little bit of a push and also make it a little round. Other than that, that's pretty much that shape. And next I'm gonna work on that rear side leaf. Let's take these faces, drag them out with shift so that we have a copy of it. And that ensures us that we already have a base here that perfectly fits in there. Just do some positioning on it. which also requires our upper part here of the rear side to come down a bit. Some readjustments. And that piece here we can then use our shell modifier on. Inner amount will bring it down in that case. And I'm just going to collapse that and drag these vertexes out here to the left and already add that cylindrical element. Drag it out a bit. Make sure it's centered there on the rear side leaf. and add that extra bevel that we see on the reference image. Inset and extrude. Will give us that shape. And now we just have to drag these, this face here a little to the left. And also I wanna have that cap in there. So I'm going to use the extrusion, but actually have it going inside. Auto smooth and symmetry modifier. Just make sure that the pivot is at zero so that the symmetry modifier actually works. And continue here with another edge connection. Put it into place and extrude a few more faces here out on the top part. and a few more faces that we can extrude out. Give it a bit of that bevel there. Keep in mind that that reference image in the background has a perspective on it. So it's important to look at other reference images as well. For the case you've been wondering why I don't always position it exactly as seen there on the reference image. The one that we have in the viewport.
gonna take these faces here and push them in which results here in that curved shape that we want to have and I'm going to take these edges and give them a chamfer and then delete the faces that we have in the inside once we adjusted that a bit more and now I just want to deselect the top edges make an edge connection through these two on each side and delete the faces just reconnect the vertexes here and now border mode and cap that hole and connect these vertexes which then results in that little gap that the rear side actually enables us to look through and I'm gonna split that here slice plane and split and now in element mode we can delete the right side so that we can work here only on one side I'm gonna assign some smoothing groups here auto smooth continue with some chamfering and that overwrote our smoothing groups again and I just noticed that it's that little button if it's checked then it will kill our smoothing groups and we have to reassign them so let's make sure it's unchecked it might be that by default it's always checked but it's something to be aware of that is that little thing when we have the chamfer dialog that breaks our smoothing groups from time to time and it's a new thing I haven't noticed it in earlier versions of 3D Max probably 2015 also has it but I skipped that version Either way, I'm going to continue here with cleaning up some more geometry. Target weld. And let's see what it looks like. Smoothing group. Let me make an extra cut here. And we don't really need that edge loop. I rather have it there where we just made the cut. Target weld that over and then just take that vertex and connect it over to that one. Smoothing group there on the corner. And let me take these two edges and connect them so that we have an extra edge there and bring it up a bit because I want to work in that gap here and for that I also need another edge loop over here make sure it's aligned properly and just drag it over here to the left side some more and now I'm going to take these three edges or four edges all the way make another edge connection align it and put it into position a little closer to the center gonna take these faces and delete them and with these two edges here or three edges I'm just gonna press shift and drag that geometry down here convert it to a vertex selection and snap it down here to that vertex weld it symmetry modifier should have a threshold of 0 0.01 always or else it may weld some weird things together so I just collapsed that and gave it a cap so that it's actually having the geometry in there and I'm going to get rid of that edge loop here at the center same as this one and now just reconnect some vertexes as well as getting rid of that edge loop in the center that would just add to our poly count for no reason connect these vertexes because we have that overlap there 
and let's see what it looks like here with our chamfer modifier. Unsmooth edges and turbo smooth on top and that is a pretty nice looking rear side leaf. Next I want to be adding some text and for that I go in top perspective and click that button there on that compass two times so that we have it properly aligned to actually have the text appearing as we would write it down. So let's make use of our text tool here. Just click somewhere in the viewport will make that text appear and sometimes it might be really scaled up high so you may not even see it unless you zoom out. Just one thing to be aware of. And now I'm just going to position it correctly. It's going to be a floater text above our geometry as all floaters. So I just want to drag it up here on top of that rear side leaf. And then I'm just going to type these numbers down. Press enter. So that we have that text appearing vertically here. And as for the last letter here on the left side, it looks like a Cyrillic letter and it appears to be a U that is really square. So I'm just going to have an L there for it and make a U out of it in just a bit. Basically just drag some edges up. First of all, let me modify these parameters a bit more. And also I want to change the text over to Arial Bold just to make it a little bit more fat and further change these parameters here on the text so that it fits. Copy that over to the right side and drag it down. And now I'm just going to replace these numbers. The last letter we can delete. And now I'm going to select both of these individual text elements here. Just bring them down more to our actual geometry since it's a floater later. And since we have it as a shape, I want to convert it into an editable poly in just a moment. Press our editable poly shortcut as seen in the introduction or just right click it and tell it to convert it to an editable poly. Now I'm going to isolate that and work here on that letter that looks like an inverted U. And I actually believe that this is a P in the Cyrillic alphabet. Either way, I'm going to drag some more edges out here. Take these birds and align them. And now I want to take that text and copy another one of these in between the number squares down there. Clone to element. And I'm gonna select these squares because I want to scale them a bit wider as seen on the reference. But first let me go over and drag it up a bit on the z-axis. Back here to our isolation mode to see better what's happening. I will then go over to that selection here and just drag it on the x-axis which will then result in that proper scale. Let me take these faces here and position them so that they are perfectly aligned there. And I just want to take these squares again and make them a little less wide here on the y-axis. Give it a scale. Let me put a material on that and select everything in face mode, Control A, and then just inset. And now drag it out. 
select everything and auto smooth and put the chamfer modifier on. I don't want to be adding a turbo smooth on top of that. It's perfectly fine just to have it here with a chamfer. It will come on to our normal map perfectly fine. The turbo smooth would mess it up too much. And let me just take these edges and first of all delete that face that we don't need there in the back and then drag it into position here and also do some extra inset here on that. Again as seen on the reference assign some smoothing groups here to each of these segments and also add a chamfer modifier. This time we want to have the turbo smooth on it. And I will jump into left autographic view and only take our reference plane here into isolation mode and start working on that little handle that we have on the rear side. For that I'm gonna have a cylinder with 24 edges, collapse it and same as usual select the front face, invert selection and delete the rest. And now I'm gonna have that vertex connection here with an edge and drag some fresh geometry out of it. Let me switch over here to the scale and bring that in a bit. Some more edge connection in combination with the chamfer. And also let's already add that little piece that we have on the top of that. Let's give it 18 sides, which should be fine for that. Gonna take the Y rotation out of that so that we can collapse it to an editable poly. Take these verts and drag them on the X axis. And now same as usual, I'm just gonna use the inset and drag some more geometry out here. Give that a bit of a scale here, a bit of a squeeze. Grow the selection, invert it, and just delete the ones that we had there in the background. Bit more of a scale here. And now I'm just gonna take it and give it a rotation here. Gonna take that piece and add another edge connection here so that we can then take that face and push it in on the x-axis. Gonna take all these border edges and drag them out as well. And now with that face I'm just gonna do what we already did on the safety switch. Put the extrusion amount to zero and then drag it out while being in local mode. And same over here, I'm just going to extrude it out for that one. Cap that empty space there. And do a bit of cleanup here. Some target welding. And let's get rid of some of these edges there. Because similar to what we were doing on the trigger guard, I will then take that edge here and give it a chamfer. but we don't need it to be also at the bottom part of that. So I'm just gonna have it here on the top of it. Reconnect some of these edges. And 
just take some of these corners and give it some more roundness here. Chamfer and flow connect in that case. And a double chamfer here on the top part. Often depends on which part would be more visible from first person view. Whether I do double chamfer or just one chamfer plus the flow connect. And let me drag that out here. Zoom in here on the rear side and add that cylinder here, which I forgot. That's where that rear side leaf would actually pivot around. And there's a good chance that we will barely see that, but we should have it there either way. Just delete that face there that we will definitely not see. Put the pivot to zero on X axis and then just mirror it over here as a copy to the other side and I attach it together. Apply a gray material to it. And let me have another look here at our rear side. I find that a bit too thin here, so I will just take these inner faces and drag them in a bit. And since I am currently rescaling some elements, I also want to do the same here on that one. So I'm going to use the FTD modifier, collapse it, reposition that bolt head, and the same here on that side. FTD2, just take these control points there on the side and push it in, and then collapse. And now that element looks like it could need a flow connect, it's a bit too low poly looking. And I just noticed that this comes down a bit more on the reference. So I'm gonna take these words and drag it down. And since the symmetry modifier is still on it, we only have to do it here on one side. Also gonna use some flow connect here to make it a bit rounder. And now that I see that, I actually want to scale that a bit on the x-axis, widen it a bit. And back to that piece here, I want to add that little element that tapers in there. And for that, I'm going to make use of a cylinder here with 18 sides. Position it so that we can use our proboline operation. A little bit of an overlap there, as you can see. And then our usual settings here, remove only invisible and subtract it. And you may remember it from earlier, the boline adds some extra vertexes, like this one here. And we just gotta make sure we find them all and actually delete them because we really don't want to have them. They just add to some strange tessellation and extra poly count. Let me take these edges and give them an extra chamfer. And that chamfered area there, I want to have one smoothing group to it. First, I'm going to target weld that stuff here. Just going to select everything and give it an auto smooth, which will get the job done. And now I'm going to add another floater object. And same as usual, cylinder and just take the front face on it. And then with the inset, I'm going to have that geometry ready here. Gonna take it here in the border mode and push out some more geometry with our scale so that our high poly floater has a bit of an overlap there, which looks nice then later when we bake the normal map.
And as a next thing, I want to work on our handguard. So I'll switch over here to front perspective. Give it 24 sides for the moment. Make sure it doesn't have any Y rotation on it and put it to zero on the X axis. Let me scale it so that it actually fits well here with our receiver. And then same as usual, I'm going to delete everything from the cylinder. Have an edge connection through the middle and drag up some edges after we deleted the upper half and drag it over here to match our reference image and then just with border mode drag out some fresh geometry. Also want to have it with a gray material. Some extra edge loop here. And now I'm going to get rid of that edge loop for a moment and just give it a squeeze here on the y-axis. Bring it up there as seen on the reference image that we've just pulled out. It's really flat there at that beginning of the handguard and then it kind of tapers into that wider shape here at the bottom. Kind of drag that down here and give it a chamfer. And as a matter of habit, I'm going to take these edges and align them vertically. I really like to keep my edges straight in some occasions. Makes it easier for the unwrap later. Let me add another edge loop here. And not to get confused, I actually want to be creating that handguard here on that reference image, which I prefer over that soft one that we see there in the background. So for the case that you wonder, I'm actually referencing that reference image that I just showed you. I just added another edge loop there in the middle of that segment. And now I'm going to take these vertexes Use our FDD2 modifier and with the upper control points selected, I'm going to drag it down here. And with these two control points, I'm going to move it up. And just some general reshaping here to fit it better here with the main shape of that stock or that handguard, which is definitely the same. Another edge loop here at the top part. And with that face selected, I'm going to inset it and then take that selection and drag it out here on the x-axis. Going to bring that vertex up so that we have it more horizontal there. And also shift these edges a bit to the side here, to the inside, as well as giving them a chamfer here. Let me add another edge loop here and give it a chamfer as well so that we have two edges there, edge loops, that we can connect here with these vertexes. Gonna give it an auto smooth and now I'm going to assign smoothing groups here to these particular faces with the auto smooth as well. And let's see what it looks like with a symmetry modifier in combination with our chamfer and turbo smooth. And I want that to be the standard chamfer, not the quad chamfer. Quad chamfer adds two segments and I actually just want it to be one, same as our stock, so that it's softer. And let's give that a bit more of a curve there, or a steeper curve actually. 
and just some more definition here on that shape. Squeeze all that here on the y-axis to make it a little more flat there at the bottom part. Some more chamfering and as you can see it bevels in there. So what I want to do is take these vertexes here and position them a little bit to the left and the right. And I'm getting the impression that I'm working here on flipped geometry. So let me check that with backface cull. And that reveals that indeed I have to flip it back so that it actually points in the right direction. Now I'll prepare that bevel segment here where it goes in a bit, that wood. And I will just use the inset and connect that here with the upper part with a cut tool. And now with actually just the upper face, I'm going to push it in here on the x-axis. And also give it a chamfer here to make it a bit rounder. As well as connecting our vertexes here. Let me grab these faces here and assign one smoothing group to it, auto smooth. And also I want to select these faces and give it one smoothing group. And as a next thing I'm going to make an edge connection through here. Go into edge mode and align it horizontally. Take these upper edges and also position them better here. And these ones I also want to bring up so that we can now use our cut tool and follow that shape where it has these gaps there on the hand guard. Already go ahead and delete the faces that we don't want. Connect these two words and delete the faces, which leaves us now with that shape here that we want to have. And I'm going over here to our border mode, convert it to an edge selection and just deselect the edges that I don't want. And now I'm just going to drag it out a bit on the X axis. I'm actually going to drag it all the way out to zero and use our symmetry modifier. Let's see what it looks like here with our chamfer and turbo smooth on top. There's a bit of a pinching going on, so I will remove these edges. And now we got rid of that pinch there. Let me delete some of these edges here on the top part that we don't want to have. And as a next thing, I already want to add this metal cap there. Still not done with the handguard, but let's already add this element to it here. Gonna take these edges and just drag them out straight here on the x-axis. Symmetry modifier and collapse too, and then just cap that gap there. And connect these vertexes. And let me just check which smoothing group we have here and assign the same smoothing group here to that side on that metal cap. Later I'm going to actually cut a hole in there for the barrel in the inner segment of that hand guard. But for now I'm just going to cap it here and prepare it so that we can use our symmetry modifier. And that should be more than enough here for our third chapter. In the next chapter we will then continue with more hand guards. And of course we also still have to add the barrel here to our AK. Which will then finally make it look like a real gun. And that's pretty exciting. So I hope I see you in the next chapter. 
I know that there have been a lot of very complicated pieces here in that one and I can make promises that that won't be the case in the next one. I hope that you were following along so far and that you had a good time. It's gonna be all worth it once we throw it into Substance Painter later and get some glorious texture on our AK. Either way, I'll see you in the next one.